Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Tuesday, October the 22nd, the year's 2019. Let's talk trading. Deal or no deal? I received a thank you and a compliment from a trader. They said that, um, you know, hearing the reasons why you shouldn't have entered a trade and was really helpful. So I thought I might dive into it a little deeper and maybe a little wider. Because there's something called the confirmation bias. And what people tend to do is look for what they want to see, what they want to find. They want to find a reason to enter a trade. And so if you look hard enough, you can find a reason to enter a trade, even though there might have been two, 10, 20, 100 or more reasons why you shouldn't have entered that trade. Of course, you can take this to the extreme and you can always find a reason not to enter, to offset a reason to enter, and then you'd be paralyzed and you'd never trade. But some things, as I mentioned yesterday, are, are kind of obvious in hindsight. So it's one of the things we can explore. And one of the things in hindsight is that you should have your risk and money management in place. Um, in fact, I was listening to a uh, YouTube video. I say listening because I wasn't watching it <laughs> um, because it, there was really no point in watching it. It was just, but I w wanted to listen to it. And they said that you basically there's only two ways to learn. And I thought that was interesting. They said, number one is you learn subconsciously. Meaning, you, they said you get programmed from when you're born to up until about seven years old. You just get, it's all subconscious. You're just in the environment. You're taking things in and you're learning. You're learning how to, to negotiate the world. But, you know, it wasn't because of some rules you read or a class you attended. It's just... That's how you learn it subconsciously. The other one is you learn through repetition, which is something that I've been talking about for a while. You, you, you do something, you do it again, you do it again. As you repeat, you become more confident. And when you become more confident and you have confidence, then you have success, which gives you more confidence. Then you keep doing it. And, and it's, a, it's an upward cycle, upward spiral. So, you want to make sure that when you're trading, the things that you're repeating are things that are going to work to your benefit, as opposed to things that work against you. So hindsight bias, confirmation bias, we don't want to use it. And I also was thinking about risk and money management a little more since we talk about it every day. And I say the dollar amount or percent willing to use. But I'm thinking about changing that to only say the percent you're willing to lose per trade. And the reason being is simple. Let's say you start out with a thousand dollar account. And say your risk is 1%. Okay. That is $10. But let's say you grow that account to 10,000. 1% One is 100. So you want to keep doing what you were doing at the $1,000 level as you move up if you're successful. And so if, you, if you're always thinking in terms of percent rather than the actual money, you can focus more on the trade and focus on what you're doing and not have that same emotion as if you put a dollar amount to it. Because if you're trading and 1% of the uh, portfolio is a thousand bucks versus 10 bucks, you know, I, I don't want to lose a thousand bucks, but hey, it's only 1%. And if you think, okay, well, this is 1%, you know, it doesn't matter if it's $10, 100 or a thousand, it doesn't really matter to you because you're focused on the percent. It'll keep your mind in the game. You won't have the shakes because the lot size has increased, the PIP per lot has, or the dollar per lot has increased. You're not focused on that. You're just focused on the percentages. Okay. Now, 
hindsight or foresight, you know, deal or no deal. Are you going to take the trade or are you going to pass? Let me bring up the euro yen because euro yen was in a very interesting position this morning. And as you can see here, we're looking at the daily chart. It came out of the uh, wick zone of the previous day's candle. It failed to break the high of this candle three days ago. So I was looking at this trade and I thought I should go short. And I did. And then as I went short, I was looking down here at H1. And then I went even further down to M15. Okay, and basically what I'm, I was doing, I was looking at the, uh, at the wicks. And then I even went as far down as M1. And so let's scrunch this in here. So I went short somewhere around here, somewhere around 97. Maybe it's right, right around here, 97. I think it was right here. And then price dropped. And then price came back up. And then, let me think, was that what it, yeah. And then price went through and then came back down. And then I took profit down here. Because once again, I was looking at the wicks, and I believe it was on, I think it was M15 showed it to me, right here, this wick. What it told me was, um, right here when it dropped, and then it came up, I, I exited about right here. But then when it came back down here, it's like, I pretty much thought, they're going to probably move the price back up, and I might be able to get another short in which I did right here, but I got stopped out because when I moved my stop to like a break even plus a half a pip and then the price had gone down here and then it reversed on me and I was looking for price to come back down here because of this this tail here. So once again, I'm, I'm looking to the left and I'm just looking at, at the wicks, how many wicks it, it cuts. In fact, let me pause the video for a second. Okay, um, I'm going to bring out an oldie but goodie um, indicator here. What I added to the screen was TRO above below. And what it does is it tells me uh, basically how many bars you know, the close was above this price and how many the close was below. Okay. And so here we're looking at 15 minute bars. And this gives me an idea of um, if there's more bars above and less bars below, then maybe price is going to go up. And if there's uh, less bars above and more bars below, then maybe price is going to go down. It, it gets into what I call rare air. And If you notice here, if you scrunch the chart, the uh, the way the indicator works is it looks at all the bars here um, that you can see. So it's the visible bars. And so, you know, people could say, oh, well, you could draw this trend line and you know what how I feel about trends or you could draw this channel and it's pointing down. Well, I just say, well, here was a high and this failed to make a higher high and failed to make a higher high and failed to make a higher high. OK. And it's pretty simple. So as far as entries and exits, and we're looking at M15, but you can also look at the daily, which I, I like to look at a lot because once again, here I'm looking at the uh, at the uh, wick wick area here, and I want to trade when price is leaving the wick. And you can see here we only had two bars out of 41 bars above this current price. So what I'm thinking is, what, what I was thinking is price should probably drop. And it did, and it fell out of this lower wick zone, but then it moved right back inside it. 
but you could do this on any pair i mean back to the yen you see here we only have a few bars above it we've almost a doji here but you see the same pattern made a high failure to make a high he had an outside bar here so when you're looking to trade it's like well should i get into this trade right now because first you're like trying to say well is it going to go up or down which way should i trade and should i get in the trade well if you go short you see well price is just pushed up 13 pips and pushed down 14 pips so you're kind of at a seesaw teeter-totter and you see here price probably took out the previous day's pivot already and the previous day's midpoint and then it's pushed back up so this might be a chance where hey no deal i'm just gonna wait i don't like price in this area to enter i don't see any any potential here so that's what you have to do you have to look for reasons not to enter a trade okay all the gaps have filled and you can see here dollar yen is in the upper weekly wick zone but hasn't moved out of it I'm going to just blast through the charts 107 pips below the yearly open and the month is still green by 51 pips and the week's green by 15. now here once again looking at the daily it entered the range of the first day of the year that went across that low and then it fell back down so if you took that trade you're up 13 pips and you see it also crossed over the first day of the week yesterday and that looks like that was good for maybe five or six pips and you see sometimes you have to be willing to basically scratch a trade with just you know a pip or two or, or just break even because it's just not working and you can see the opens that were above and opens that were below there they all are and the same for the for the daily ranges you can see here you scrunch the chart down inside bar we got inside that monthly inside bar and then it pushed it back up you're up 10 pips see some of these trades you can call them rinse and repeat right because you get in the trade you take some profit because it looks like price isn't going to continue then it comes back gives you another entry and then you get to do it again on the range only four over 100 so far and you can see dollar yen only 27 euro yen only 54 uh, all the movement seems to be centered around the pound weekly holo we just or uh, there's the weekly h1 highest open there and here's the lowest open here you can see price moved off of that lowest open and looking here at the buy zone you know with 27 pip range we're probably going to have the same thing tomorrow where the pivot points within the buy zone so no real bias and you can see here as you take these trades it's not much movement and these are like pretty much scratch trades and here we can see there's no rat zone trades range is too small and we see here um there was something i had mentioned uh we took out the weekly pivot and i was looking for that to be taken out and the miss pivots here let's put that back to the daily let's put that back to the yen so fellow traders i am going to wrap that up i hope that gave you some more uh information you can use when it comes to what to look for to not enter a trade because remember it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so go out there and drain the banks and do me a favor hit the subscribe button and share this video on some other forum or social media i'd appreciate it thank you